Hi folks, welcome to the Prepared Homestead. This is Travis. Thank you all for stopping by to watch. I want to talk to you today about a subject that I talk about ever so often. And it's usually a, a, one of those very divisive things that people il either really, really are on board with it, they're trying to do it, they agree with it, yay, great, or you just don't understand my situation. You're not being sensitive to folks like me that's going through things like I'm going through that I just can't do that. I get it. I'm not being insensitive. I'm just trying to tell you that, that you want to be super prepared. This is one of those things to do. And that is getting out of these cities. These cities are horrible. They're absolutely filled with violence, with crime, with, with wickedness, with disgusting evil, it's disease. They're filled with, with government intrusiveness into your lives. You can't do anything anymore. They have to control everything, and it's time we get out of that. And I want to talk about that for just a few minutes um, as we get going, because I, I made a podcast yesterday, and, and that's the topic of this podcast. I'm doing a, a radio-style, radio show podcast. In fact, it is on a radio station. Um, it's being broadcast on a... Not local, local. It's a, an hour, hour and a half away radio station, but it's being broadcast there. It's it's being broadcast on multiple podcasting flat platforms, and um, it's also on an online radio station. So you can go go listen to that if you just go to like Apple or Spotify, any of those kind of places, and search for the Prepared Homestead. You'll find it. I know a lot of you really hate to hear all this advertising. This is free. It doesn't cost you anything. To, you know, if you have one of those apps, you can listen to it. It's free. But it's weird how people will listen and watch ads from YouTube and ads from, you know, all these other, you know, if you're watching it on Amazon TV or you're watching whatever, you know, TV video service, you'll watch ads and that's okay. But if someone talks about an ad that, you know, like this here, even though it doesn't cost you anything, well, that's bad. You know, we can't promote, you know, small businesses that actually truly help small families and things like that. That's, Anyways, I'll, I'll get off of my soapbox here and I'll just move on. I, I do want to mention, completely unrelated to this, uh, we had another bank failure yesterday. It, it, it's, it, we've gotten, I guess, so used to them that it wasn't even big in the news. It wasn't any kind of front page of the news, but it in fact happened. PacWest Bank, um, you know, this that was one of those ones that was teetering on the edge during the, the whole uh, banking, you know, collapsed those three, four, five banks that collapsed uh, back a few months ago. Well, it finally went under and was bought up by another bank. And today, uh, the Federal Reserve and the banking regulators are meeting to um, to, to decide to vote on uh, whether to adopt what's called a, a Basel Three Endgame. I think I'm pronouncing that right. Basel Three Endgame per, uh, regulation. Now I, I, I don't I you know I don't have the, the knowledge to get deep into it and understand everything, but from what I understand, it's basically this plan to protect the very, very large banks and to force all the other banks to comply with all of these kinds of investment and operational risk regulations that could eventually destroy the smaller banks and causing the big banks to just gobble them up. Very interesting uh, and, and funny that they're calling it the end game. That's actually what it's being called uh, by banking regulators, is the end game. Uh, so anyways, let's move on. We talk about preparedness all the time on this channel. We talk about how you have to get ready and get your houses in order. But if your house is in the middle of thousands and millions of other people, if it's in the middle of a bustling city, and I'm not even speaking like something like New York, I'm just talking about uh, a somewhat larger population. If you if you can't go outside, I'm going to be crude for a moment. If you want to, you can cover your children's ears. I have a personal rule. If you can't go outside and go to the bathroom as a man and take a leak, then you're too close to people. If you live in that kind of situation where you have people all around you, odds are you're... you're survivability level is not nearly as good as it could be if you lived outside. And that's what I talk about in this podcast this week, my radio show. Um, and of course, it's I go into much grander detail than I will on here because it's for two hours. But I'm telling you folks, if you 
really are concerned with what's going on, you need to come out of her, my people. Get out of Babylon. Now, don't, don't get on here, some of you, and, and argue with me that I'm taking that, that phrase, that biblical scripture out of context. I know I am to an, a certain extent, but it's still a representation of evil. It's a representation of wickedness. It's a representation of sin. And that is what we are seeing happen in our cities all over America. Not even just the big, big ones. It used to be known that if you go to the big metropolis areas, you would see all kinds of, you know, lascivious behaviors and crime and everything. Now it's just happening at pretty much any city. Unless maybe, yes, I know, you hear my dog. She's a big puppy and she's crazy. And she likes the creek water better than anything. But anyways, maybe these small cities, and when I'm saying small, some of you from the big cities, you're thinking small is something under 100,000 population. No. When I'm saying small, I'm saying under maybe three, 4,000 population. That's max. You start getting any bigger than about 3,000 population for a little town, and you're starting to get a little too big for me. In fact, uh, the few times a year that we go into the big city and I just despise it and I'm constantly waiting to get back to the farm, uh, we're talking about a town about the size of uh, about 15,000 people. I mean, that's just, that's getting way too big for me. There's a reason for that. <clears throat> we're seeing liberalism. We're seeing Marxism. We're seeing this, this wicked, sinful, satanic ideology that all of us absolutely despise, that we see it all the time in the news, we see it online, we're seeing it happen, it's now starting to filter down into all these cities because everyone in America anymore has become so plugged into the internet. You know, when I grew up and I've talked to people about this and you know, when you get people my age and stuff, you, we, I start talking to them and they're like, yeah, you're right, I, I really never thought about that. I grew up in a very small town, a very small town, you know, at the time, you know, probably had about 1,500 people, maybe less. And it was a farm town, farm community. You know, other than the few businesses, everyone else was in farming somehow. You know, that's what I did growing up, working on farms. And we had like our own little culture for that town. And that was common with other towns. We, it, you had the small town culture. Um, Myself and, and others like me at my age, you know, we were listening to music, rural kind of music. It was mostly country, southern rock, that kind of stuff, you know, gospel music, old southern gospel music. And there was a big distinction between the culture of the big city and the culture of the small towns, the small rural country towns. And everyone knew that. You dressed different, you drove different vehicles, you listened to different music, you talked different, you acted different. And then between TV and then morphing into the internet came along. Now everywhere, no matter how small of an area it is, there are people that talk and dress and act and listen to music and behave and stuff like people do in the inner cities. And, and, and I know that's a, a very tiny, tiny example of what I'm talking about. But what I'm getting to is, is the, the wickedness and the immorality and the, the, the crime and all of the, the, the negative behaviors that for forever we've all known that exist in these very, very large cities, well, they're trickled down to the small areas now. And it's a lot of it's because of this, the, the ability to communicate, connect with everyone, everywhere, anytime you want. When you have a concentration of people that you do in any of these cities, when you have people just all around you, it increases the, the possibility, um, it increases the, the, the likelihood that you will experience some kind of negative effect of it. You're, the, the crime, people you know, just behaving badly. Look at the stuff that happened three years ago in cities. That behavior, while not as widespread, has been shown to start to continue on elsewhere. We're watching, we're watching humanity, especially Americans, uh, I mean, it's like they're losing their minds. Uh, have you watched some of these videos recently of how people are behaving? People on airplanes. There was one just a couple of days ago, a woman um, 
could be a combination of drugs and mental insanity and maybe demonic oppression. I don't know. But she's in an airplane and she's on her hands and her feet. She's got one hand on, on a, one chair, one hand on another, and her feet on, on separate ones. And she's straddling over the center aisle. And all she's doing is cussing and growling and gurgling. Like absolute, something like out of a crazy movie just screaming and her body is contorting and twisting and stuff um, there's been a couple of videos recently of of people in public just losing their minds and stripping down no clothes and walking around in a grocery store smashing food all over them or running around in the middle of traffic firing guns completely naked uh, the, the stuff that goes on in cities it, it, it's the full spectrum of just ungodliness the full spectrum of ungodliness. And if you're wanting to provide your family with a safe place to live, not just to ride out all of these apocalyptic things that I talk about, but to also shield your family from the evilness that's out there, you need to get out of these places. You just need to do it. And I know that everyone on here that's wanting to or that hasn't yet is going to have some kind of excuse of why they just can't do it right now. And I'm here to tell you that there are ways to get around those excuses. I know personally right now in my area, I know people that have that are that are older, older than myself that have serious health conditions and they sold their homes, they sold everything. And they came out here and they bought raw bare land and they're living in a tent in the middle of summer in the Ozarks hottest year on record according to everything in the news so that they can build themselves a place to live I've seen all kinds of things that people have done to make it work and, and is it easy no it's not easy but it's not complicated either and you can do it and you can make it work and there are still places all over the country right here where I live and many others that you can find reasonably priced properties homes, bare land, whatever it is, and you can make it work. And I'm telling you, if you are very serious about the, the immorality that's going on, about the, the control of your mind and your lives, the, 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 the sickness and the evilness that's being spread to our children that they're being exposed to all the time, the violence and the very real possibility of government finally bringing their final blow down on us and controlling everything, then you need to get out of the cities. It's just plain and simple. You just need to get out of them. And I, there's going to be some that say that I can't. And I, and I mean, I can offer you solutions to be a little bit more prepared in the city, but the reality is you're never going to be as, as secure and prepared in the city as you can be out in the country. You can, where you can actually have some space and not have, the concentration of people, I mean, it's, it's one thing, it's just simple mathematics. You have less people, and when people start doing bad, crazy things, because there's much less of them around you, then there's a lot less chance that you will have to deal with those problems. Um, I mean, to be honest with you, I live in a very large county land mass size, and we have the same or less amount of people in the entire county than some apartment complex have in them. So think about that. We're talking over a thousand square miles and, and, and some apartment complexes have more people in them. So it, it's, a, it's not concentrated at all. And I know you're gonna say, well, those places like that are few and far between. Actually, they're not. If you look on a map, the vast, vast majority of America is still, still rural country. It may not all be out in the deep woods, but it's still very rural. And you can make the move and you can make it happen if you're determined. Yes, you have to make sacrifices. Yes, when you come out into the countryside, don't act like you're from the big city. Don't bring your big city politics and your big city attitude. Don't come out here with this attitude that you know what you're doing, that you can do it. Come out here with the attitude of humility and, and being open to locals uh, helping you and, and offering you advice. Don't come out here trying to change things when they're not mowing the side roads or they don't fix your gravel you know, road that you live on for a few weeks. Or you know, the, the response time is 45 minutes to an hour from you know, police or fire or medical. Don't go complaining about that. You know, if you think that the local public schools aren't as advanced and modernized enough, don't be going and complaining about that. 
because that's bringing the big city politics out here. But if you come out here with truly a, a, a heart to, to learn and to adapt and to assimilate into being a rural person, you will be accepted. There's very few places I've ever heard that absolutely will not accept you as an outsider, even if you come there with that type of, of humble attitude. It's time you start doing it. And if you really want to up your preparedness level, this is the way to do it. It's hard. It you sacrifices, absolutely. You have to downsize, usually. Most people, to make this really work, you have to go down to a small house, you know, maybe sell a lot of your fancier stuff, appliances, fancy cars. But you know what? You don't need that brand new car driving out here in the woods. You're just going to tear it up thing ain't gonna last anyways. Go buy you an old vehicle, some old truck, some old SUV, and you'll be good. You don't need something fancy. Out here, no one cares anyways. No one cares what you drive. It, it, it doesn't matter to people. You need to get out from under this, this matrix that they have created, that they've convinced the American people that the only way to be happy is to spend nearly your whole adult life slaving away for someone else so, so that you can continually be in debt and make the wealthy wealthier so that someday you might have the ability to spend the last few years of your life with some kind of, of, of freedom. It's, it's all a lie, folks. Get out from under it and spend time with your family and, and, and create a life that is dependent upon your you, what you do, that, that, that your families, the food that they're eating comes from your own hands. That it's, it's a closer relationship between you and God the Creator. Get out of these cities. Get out of Babylon. It's time to come out from her. His people. You need to get your houses in order. Prepare yourselves mentally, physically, and spiritually. Thanks for watching, and I'll catch you in the next video.